So it's about the father, the father's grief towards his son's reaction to him slapping him for playing in the rain. So it's basically the father's predicament where he feels as though he, his son views him as a monster, even though he somewhat meant well in terms of slapping him, but his son is really upset towards his actions. How old is this son who is, who is upset? So he's a really young child, so he can't really understand why he did it. So it also talks about the innocence of a child. Yeah, so we have a, a parent. It said that the son was three years old in Stun Zone. I want to say bright eyes. When I say someone has bright eyes, it means they're just young. They don't understand life just yet. You know, he's splashing his feet. Just maybe. I think it reference to like his innocence, the little boy's innocence. Yeah. About innocence. Yeah. Just a young innocent child do, having some fun. He's not seeing where his actions might be dangerous or wrong. The father knows better, and so he punishes the son. But of course, he feels badly because now the son is looking at him like you monster. How dare you slap me like that? So what what do you think are some Sir. some some deep um conflicts Sir. within the poem? Yes. Sorry, that would be referred to like when your parents sit and them tell us it hurt you, it hurt them more than how it hurt you. Like, <laughs> but I really see the science behind it. But well, this, like, this is this is the science right the here. Pain. I we're am seeing we're the seeing the pain. science in this poem. The boy was laughing at first; he was having a grand time, but uh, suddenly he changed, perhaps from laughing to crying. If you have ever observed a baby or a young child, one second they can be laughing and the next second they can be crying. Uh, it it kind of refers to the saying, you know, the saying, um, after joy is sorrow. So um, after the boy, he was having a good time and he was playing in the rain and his father got upset and because he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. And so the father hit him. And so now he's in in sorrow. What was this worth a slap? Couldn't the father have just said, Before, "Don't, let me don't just... do that"? Yes, Tessa. Yeah. Um. What I do is I know that sometimes it's easy, I suppose, to because I, I saw in the chat about the perspective. The poem is the perspective of the father, right? Is a parent. Everything is being seen through the eyes of the parent. So for me, the ogre tower is above you, that grim giant. I, I never really look at it as the boy necessarily be seeing the father as the ogre, as opposed to the father just seeing himself as an ogre, reflecting, reflecting his guilt about what he had done. So he perceives himself in that way, as opposed to a three-year-old actually seeing the boy like that, seeing the father like that, sorry. Yeah, that's... Actually, Tessa, let, let me be honest, that is a very mm. interesting point, because all along, most of us or all of us might have been saying, ah, the, fa the boy is looking at the father in this way. But at three years old, are you able to conceptualize an ogre? <laughs> are you able to understand, you know, Sir? resentment? Or is it Sir? that the father is being hard on himself? Mm -hmm. Do we see any other... I feel like, I feel okay. like the uh, father is looking back and saying that probably he he doesn't know his own danger he doesn't know what he's doing he doesn't fully understand anything so it's kind of regret hitting him or probably Sorry. he did it out of out of shock or anger of just seeing him outside splashing so now he's looking back and regretting what he did because he's saying maybe that maybe i could have approached it in a different way maybe i could have done something differently maybe i didn't have to slap him so he's feeling he's feeling bad about it because you know say he's he's just three years old he doesn't understand what he's doing he's he's in a sense sure. all of this. Uh, uh, sure, we can look at this from mm -hmm. another perspective. Sure, I have two points to make. Okay, uh, for now let's let's focus on on this on this point. If you have a different point, let's deal with, deal with it after. So if you're sure, commenting yes, on I'm this point. I was here just put in the chat that um the second paragraph is about the boy's perspective. But I don't but I don't think that it's an actual from the boy's perspective. I think it's the father just thinking of it like what thinking of what the boy is actually feeling, you know. Because you know when you do something wrong, 
or like you do something or you like you hear a situation and you decide to think of it from a different person's perspective you know that you know you think of it from a different person's perspective um reach out to persons and um international women stay Okay. All right. I I I see what you're saying, Gerald. All right. From here on, because the discussion is getting heated, let's let's raise raise hand in the chat, and then I'll ask you to to come in, just so we can hear what everyone has to say. Because these points are all right. Permina <laughs> immediately raised their hand. All right, Permina, go ahead, and then Jade can follow. Sir, I believe it could be even if it's from the boy or the father's perspective. There's some familiarity with it. Um, as you grow up, you get. I'm familiar with parents reading their kids' stories. So, if it's from the boy's perspective, it could be him seeing as this thing he heard about. So it is possible for him to imagine this because it's something he becomes familiar with. And if it's a father, it's something he's familiar with, as it's an activity he does with his son. A good point. Ah, uh, Jade, are you coming in? See your hand up. Yes, sir. I would say, I, I, firstly, I would say regarding the ogre towers above you, that is an allusion to fairy tales. And as we know, young children are well acquainted with fairy tales. So I think it's the father peering into his son's mind to see what he would, what the son would be most, what the son would relate most to, which is a fairy tale. So that explains why he would use the statement, the ogre towers above you. As well as the fact you had said you had also asked earlier if the slap was warranted, and personally, <laughs> personally, I don't think the slap was warranted. But I believe that the father may have done it because it's hard to communicate certain things with a child of a certain age due to their innocence and their inability to comprehend certain things. So the son may not have comprehended why playing in the rain must have been bad so the father just did a quick re reaction and slapped him because there would have been no other way to communicate why it would have been wrong it's, that's 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 very good i have grace and christy but before grace comes in let me just um elaborate a bit on what was just said we see a gap between the understandings of the father and the son we see a gap in communication between the father and the son the father wants to express the idea that you should not make a plaything of the rain. That is the point, you know, this whole ordeal, the father's message to the son in the last line is, you must not make a plaything of the rain. How the father got that message across was with the slap. He feels guilty about the slap. Maybe the son sees him as a demon. Maybe he sees himself as a demon. If we think back to the previous poem, the woman speaks, we see a similar um, gap between what the parent wants and what the child wants or understands, where the mother has this expectation, all of this, this hope, but the son does something else. So both points are kind of tackling this idea that parenting is very complex because as a parent, your perspective will not align with your child's perspective. Um, most of us here are students and we can, as teenagers, definitely understand. When we have a certain idea, a certain opinion, a certain mindset, and our parents just disagree or just flat out can't understand what, why, why we think like this. Um, they were teenagers at some point, but they were never a teenager in 2022. So they might not necessarily understand what you're feeling and you might not understand what they're feeling. So we see this disconnect between the father and the three-year-old. And as some person said, this might all be happening in the father's head. This might all be happening in the father's head. This three-year-old, maybe he cries for three seconds and then he forgets about the whole thing. But the father, it's lingering in him, you know, should I really have done that? Am I like a, 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 an ogre to this son? Do, does he see me like the, 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 the giants in his fairy tales? Yeah, we, we see the fairy tale language, which could mean that this is the son's perspective. It could also mean that this is the father's idea of the son's perspective. Note that looking at looking throughout the poem, we are not 100% sure if the speaker is the father. We are not sure if the speaker is the son. The speaker could be a third person commenting on what they are seeing in this relationship. Your mouth contorting. 
So we know that this, the boy's mouth is contorting, but we are not sure who the narrator is. It could be the father slipping in a note. It could be the son looking back, speaking about himself in the second person. It could just be another person totally um, unrelated to the father and the son. So based on the ambiguity of the narration, it is possible for us to take many different sides and all of these sides could be correct. So it's not that it must be A or it must be B. The poet wrote the poem in such a way where it could be A, B, C, and D with a side of E. All right, uh, Grace should, should come in and then, uh, and then who was it after Grace? You can raise your hand again. Grace, are you still speaking? Yes, my point was actually an addition to yours. I think like, the second stanza and the third one is also like in contrast with each other because he if we do it from the parents perspective he imagines himself as an ogre such he also doesn't want to be overtaken with grief to that the lesson that he's trying to give his child to be overshadowed so yeah good point chrissy and then abia abia um, I think that the poem starts showing us how the son feels about being slapped so he likens him to the giant from the fairy tale and then in the third stanza we see the perspective of the father that he cares for his son as if he feels guilty when he sees his tears but even though he's in a dilemma of what he did he maintains his composure in order to reiterate the, the lesson he was trying to teach. So can I explain a line, chopping clean, this tree is clambering down our plotting the perfect to chop in. So I'm not chopping clean, the tree he's scrambling down. So we're in the fairy tale perspective here. The, 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 either the son's perspective or the father's perspective of the son's perspective is this fairy tale land where you know, we have the hero and the villain. So in this case, the boy would be the hero, the father would be the villain. And I think about Jack and the Beanstalk and other such fairy tales where maybe the, the giant or the bad guy is in a tree or in a fortress and the boy just wants to chop him down, kill him. So it just speaks to how strong, how, how resentful the son might feel in that moment that he, he sees the father as an obstacle to overcome as a, as a villain to, to be rid of. So I think that's what's happening here. If you have any, any other ideas on this line, you can jump in, you can raise a hand. I'll let you jump in. We're looking at uh, chopping clean the tree he's scrambling down. You hate him. So the son hates the father. The son imagines chopping down the tree the father is scrambling down so why is the father scrambling down it means he's running he's he's losing his mind he's panicking so in the son's imagination the father is afraid of him in the in the son's imagination the father is the one the tables have turned you know sometimes our parents punish us and we just fantasize about a way we can punish them back in the son's imagination the 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 father is the one scrambling down a tree and the son is the one plotting deeper pits to chop him in, you know, put him in, putting him in a hole, chopping down the tree, cutting off his head. So the son is trying to get back at his father in this fantasy, in this fantasy. And as we said earlier, this could be, yeah, we see Jack and the Beanstalk as Permina, Permina mentions. This could be this, the father's perspective of what the son thinks. Or it could be what the son actually thinks. Chantal is saying in the chat, the poem could have no heroes because both of them make mistakes. <laughs> All right. Uh, the hero is a matter of perspective. You know, the hero is just whoever you think is the hero or whoever thinks they are the hero. Because if you look at a story from the villain's perspective, maybe the, vil the villain feels like he's the hero. The hero feels like he's the hero. So as for hero, it's just a matter of opinion, you know who who we want to say the hero is but definitely in stanza two it appears as if the son is the victim or the hero the tragic hero uh, wilton says and the father is 
you know, the obstacle, the villain, the bad guy. So in, in the exam, you might, you might get a chance to compare this poem to Little Boy Crying. They both have very similar themes. We say challenges of, of parenting. I think that is a, a past paper question. By the way, guys, I'll send you links to, uh, in the last few days, I've released some essay writing videos where I actually write essays on past paper questions about three or four videos where I write the essays in real time. So this, these videos can give you some insight into you know, the experience of writing the essay. So if you haven't watched those videos, watch them along with the analysis videos and you'll be better prepared to compare the 20 poems. I focus on poetry as opposed to the other elements of literature because poetry is, I think, the most difficult aspect. There are 20 poems and you don't know what poems are going to be on the exam. All right. Anyway, I think we have spent enough time on Little Boy Crying. Uh, I, I saw many mentions of Mirror earlier, but I'm wondering if I should go to my parents, seeing that um, we're dealing with parenthood poems. Uh, Kevi, what are you saying? Kevi Small. Um, sir, you were listing the similarities to um, the woman speaks to the man who employed her son. Can you please relist those um, similarities? Relist? Well, just based on the discussions we've been having, both poems mention the... By the way, you, you'll be getting the recording, you know, so if you can't take notes quickly enough, it's not a problem. Uh, both poems look at issues of in parenting, challenges um, in parenting, parenthood. Both poems look at parent-child relationships. We see in The Woman Speaks how the mother interacts with the son, how the son disappoints the mother. We see in this poem how the son misbehaves, how the father responds, how the son uh, feels about um, the father's response. 